About three years ago, during an online event, Seattle Mariners CEO and President Kevin Mather talked about the team, his overall thoughts and opinions on how he operates the Mariners, and it ended up not going well for him. It was a 46 minute long talk by Mather during this event, and it ended up being 46 minutes that would end his career, because what Mather did ended up revealing a lot of the unfortunate truths regarding how not just the Mariners, but other teams operate, while basically taking a dump on the entire team and some of its players. It was pretty wild, but that's not the end of it because skip ahead almost three years later and another top Mariners employee would make some pretty bad comments regarding how they operate. But again, it wasn't just a comment that applied to Seattle. It applies to too many teams across baseball and a broader issue here at play. Really quick, if you do enjoy the video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to what we got going on here. Thank you. A big controversy regarding MLB teams and its prospects over the years has been the teams purposely keeping a prospect in the minor leagues so it takes them longer to become a free agent. It's called service time manipulation. Once any player reaches the majors, they have six years before becoming a free agent. So what teams will do is try to prolong that and it's something obviously the player does not like. They want to reach free agency as young and quick as possible to get more money. Chris Bryant, the most hyped up prospect in baseball at one point, who won rookie of the year back in 2015, filed a grievance against the Cubs after his rookie season because of the manipulation of his service time, becoming a free agent one year later than he originally had hoped later on. It's a pretty clear issue, and the Mariners were no different. During his speech in early 2021, Kevin Mather said he didn't think top prospects Jared Kelnick and Logan Gilbert would start the season with the team so they can manipulate their major league service time and keep them under club control longer. Now, we all knew teams were doing this before. It was a bad kept secret, but to hear the CEO of a team feel comfortable to just openly say it, almost like he's proud and bragging of it, when it's an issue the Players and Players Association despise, that was just weird. But Mather kept going. He'd go on to trash the team's long Longtime third baseman Kyle Seeger, saying that he'll be a future Mariners Hall of Famer before then saying he was also overpaid. Mather also talked about how the team had just rehired former Mariners pitcher Hisashi Iwakuma, calling him a wonderful human being before saying that he was tired of paying his interpreter. Notice a trend here? He compliments these guys before shitting on their life for no reason. He'd mentioned that when Iwakuma was a player, they'd pay him whatever his salary was, but also would have to pay his $75,000 a year to have an interpreter with him. Wow, an extra $75,000 dollars for a major league baseball team having to pay. I hope the lights were able to stay on and the Mariners employees kids had food to eat. Once this talk by Mather went public, all hell broke loose, understandably so. It was infuriating and concerning, especially the service time manipulation comments. Just days, basically hours after the video released, John Stanton, the Mariners chairman and managing partner, released a statement condemning everything Mather had said, with Mather apologizing as well to the players and fans and announcing he was resigning. The MLB Players Association released a statement on their frustration with what was said, and it was just an overall mess and black eye for the Mariners organization that unfortunately applies to a lot of other ones across baseball. Same goes for these more recent comments by Jerry Depoto, the team's president of baseball operations. In 2022, the Mariners made the postseason for the first time in 21 years. It was awesome, it was a big deal, and it was also a sign of bright things for the future of baseball in Seattle. It seemed like a run was about to begin, a run that unfortunately took a step back in 2023 with the team missing out on the postseason. They weren't a bad team, just missing out by a couple of games, but it's obviously very disappointing to see that happen when, if anything, they were supposed to be better than they were in 2022. In the team's end of season press conference, Depoto basically said that he was doing Mariners fans a favor by having the team miss out on the postseason because it's the best way to build a good and sustainable roster rather than going all in. The most controversial thing was Depoto's 54% comment, where he claimed the Mariners' goal is to win 54% of the time, admitting that sometimes the team will win 50% of the time, meaning they're a 500 team and will miss the playoffs, and other times it could be 60%, but they shoot for 54%. And that's just a horrible way of looking at things. Here's the full message he gave in context. Watch. If you go back and you look in a decade, those teams that win 54% of the time always wind up in the postseason, and they more often than not wind up in World Series. You know, so there's your your bigger picture process. Nobody wants to hear the goal this year is we're going to win 54% of the time because sometimes 54% is, is some one year you're going to win 60%, another year you're going to win 50%. You know, it's whatever it is. But over time, that type of mindset gets you there. If what you're doing is focusing year to year on what do we have to do to win the World Series this year? You might be one of the teams that's laying in the mud and can't get up for another decade. 
So we're actually doing the fan base a favor <laughs> and asking for their patience to win the World Series while we continue to build a sustainably good roster. DePoto does have a point when he mentions the team being stuck in the mud for a decade. A team that depletes their farm system and uses all their resources to go all in for just one year of success and a shot at the World Series isn't a good plan for sustainable success, long-term success. But to be on the other extreme where the team is basically okay with being mediocre is of course not good either. DePoto quickly came out afterward to backtrack these comments and apologize, saying that the goal isn't to be mediocre and he worded things wrong. But no matter what he could say, it doesn't matter because we all know that's how the Mariners really do operate. They aren't necessarily looking to make those big splashes to take the next step and really push for a championship like other teams do. Obviously, you don't need to give out insane contracts necessarily really long-term ones, but at least some more spending and commitment to not just shooting for 54%, give or take. They haven't done much of that, and it's something the Mariners players themselves know. After the Mariners got eliminated from playoff contention at the end of last season, catcher Cal Raleigh, the man who sent Seattle back to the playoffs just one year earlier, publicly criticized the team's management for their lack of trades and spending to help the team during the season. Saying, quote, anytime you can add, I mean, look over in the other locker room right there, and he was referring to the Rangers, they've added more than anybody else, and look where it got them. There's more than one way to skin a cat, that's for sure. But going out and getting those big names, people who have done it, people who have been there, people who are leaders, people who have shown time and time again that they could be successful in this league is definitely what would help this clubhouse. With Raleigh also mentioning how the team trading away Paul Seawald one of the relievers who ended up helping the Diamondbacks hurt them. Once again, adding that although he does think that the team has done a great job of growing some players from within the farm system, they also got to go out and buy, adding on that he hoped they can add some players and become a better team. Raleigh soon after apologized to his teammates and coaches, but that had to be more of him being like, I'm just not going to say that kind of stuff publicly because it's hard to believe Raleigh's coaches and especially teammates wouldn't agree with him and would even want an apology. Raleigh mostly didn't want his comments to be taken the wrong way by his teammates for them to take it like they're not good enough so they need more help, and they understood. Another Mariners player, Ty France, didn't think anyone in the clubhouse would have an issue with what Raleigh said. Shortstop JP Crawford even went as far as to repeat some of Raleigh's thoughts, referring to them as great comments saying that he knows there's a big controversy about what he said, but also that he's with him on it because he thinks they need to go out there and make a move to help the Mariners win. So it's pretty clear. And again, no matter what DePoto says, just seeing how the Mariners operate and continue to operate, the 54% thing is pretty accurate. That's how they run things. And even more importantly, that's how a lot of teams around baseball operate. What DePoto did that day was expose a broader problem across the entire league. It's something we as fans and the players could see and felt, but just like when Mather admitted the service time manipulation thing, here's DePoto confirming that the Mariners and a lot of teams in baseball just shoot for that 54% more or less goal. Don't spend too much, don't go crazy with trading that helps you win right now, we'll sometimes make the postseason, other times we'll be average, and that's the goal. What every team in baseball wants to be now is the Rays, at least it seems that way. They want to be a team that consistently puts out a contending product every year without spending much money or making any blockbuster trades for players that will help them win now. The Rays have done a great job of this for sure. They've made the playoffs for the last five years and nine out of the last 15 years but at the end of the day how many championships have they won i mean that's really what it's about right i know baseball gets random in october more than ever but are you okay with just making the playoffs and then losing every time and then not spending or making any trades to prevent that from continuing to happen the rays have just become a model for a lot of owners league-wide to operate in a way where they can excuse some mediocrity and not going all in while still maybe contending and seemingly most importantly to them saving money that's exactly what depoto's 54 percent comments scream an excuse for not winning an excuse for why things might take a while. I think the Dodgers are a much better representation of an organization to model yourself after. One that does everything the Rays do as far as building talent in-house through drafting and development, but also an organization that makes those trades and spends that money. Does every team need to spend over a billion dollars in one offseason? No, obviously not. The Dodgers were able to do that and have it work, at least right now, because they have a foundation of success leading to it. The problem is that teams are wanting to operate in a raise way, building that foundation but not supporting it with outside talent from trades or premier free agents. It's encouraging to see a team like the Orioles changing ownership and hopefully now leaving the 54% mentality they had with the Angelos family. We know the Mets want to win. Stuff like that is of course great. 
But teams like the Mariners and a lot of others continue to use this 54% mentality to shoot for hopefully making the playoffs each year. And if not, it's all good for the long term because they didn't spend too much or trade many of their pieces in the farm system. But the reality is to miss the playoffs after making it for the first time in 21 years is a failure. 2023 was supposed to build on that success, but instead you finished in third place, watch two of your division rivals battle it out to see who goes to the World Series, and then see one of those teams go on to win the whole thing. That's a complete failure by Seattle. Hopefully things go better in 2024 for them. Hopefully they get back to October and not stall this winning window any longer. But until that 54% mentality, one that also belongs to many teams, goes away, it's going to continue being pretty frustrating for the fans and really the players in that clubhouse. Let me know what you think. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you soon.